guys so today we will be discussing about the human urinary system so as we all know the human urinary system consists of the two kidneys the ureters the bladder and the urethra each of these have their own specific function so the kidneys what the kidneys would do is it will produce urine in order to excrete whatever toxins that are in the body so the major function of the kidney would be to produce urine other than that it will also be important in order to maintain the osmotic balance along with the acid base balance of the body how it maintains the acid base balance and the osmotic balance will be discussed in further videos the ureter what it does is basically as we can see it will transfer whatever that is received from the kidneys towards the bladder so it basically has a transport function the urinary bladder will contain the urine that is brought from the ureters and it will temporarily store the urine there what the urethra would do is it will provide the pathway to excrete the urine that is within the bladder outside of the body so that is the main anatomy and the function of the body of the uh, uh, urinary system now we need to know the relationship of the urinary system to to the entire body so for that as you can see these are our ribs these structures here are our ribs and these structures here are the vertebrae so this is the bony skeleton along with the urinary system of our body so um basically our urinary system that is the kidneys ureter bladder and the urethra will lie in front of our vertebrae and the ribs so which vertebrae do they lie in front of to lie in front of vertebrae t12 t12 l1 L2 and L3 and it will also lie in front of rib 11 and rib 12 so that is the basic relationship of the urinary system to the bony skeleton you must also know that the right kidney is slightly lower than that of the left kidney that is because of the position of the liver that lies here since the liver lies around this area obviously below the uh, behind the ribs it will push down the right kidney down um that is how it lies within the ribs also you must know that these um, kidneys they lie behind the structures that lie in the abdomen that is your small bowel your large bowel your stomach or uh, your kidneys lie behind those structures so therefore it is called extra peritoneal the small bowel stomach they are all within a bag that bag is called the peritoneum so um so basically your stomach your bowels all of them are within this purple bag that purple bag is called the peritoneum this is the behind of our body and this is the front of our body so obviously your stomach and your bowels will lie in front inside the bag which is the peritoneum therefore the kidneys which is the pink structure here lie immediately behind the peritoneum so it's called a retroperitoneal structure this retroperitoneal structure which is the kidneys protected by different structures that lie outside of it right so the first structure that lies immediately outside is the renal capsule so this is the renal capsule renal capsule that covers the kidney that is that is made of out of um connective tissue right soon after the renal capsule there is the yellow color section is made of fat that is called adipose tissue adipose tissue is fat so it is the adipose capsule that we see and the most outer layer that is the red one is called the renal cap uh, sorry it's called the renal fascia that is the renal fascia 
so basically the kidney is protected by various capsules immediate capsule which is made of connective tissue is the renal capsule the capsule made out of fat is called the adipose capsule and the one that is further outside is a renal fascia which is also made out of connective tissue the blood supply would be mainly from the ivc and the aorta it will form renal arteries and renal veins as you can see the renal veins and the renal arteries will provide the blood supply to our kidneys now we have to know the structure of our kidney what is inside the kidney so that we will have there will be sqs to write on the basic structure of the kidney so if we want to cut the kidney longitudinally downwards if we take a knife and slice the kidney longitudinally downwards this is the appearance you will see this is the uh, cross section of the kidney and it shows the renal medulla cortex and the urinary flow through the kidney we will see what these are so this is the renal cortex renal cortex all this purple area is the renal cortex so basically not only that but this also is the renal cortex the pink area is the renal medulla those are the major two subsections renal cortex and the renal medulla renal cortex is also subdivided into small parts we'll see about there the most outer section is the cortical zone the most outer section is the cortical zone the one immediately inside afterwards this area is the juxta medullary zone juxta medullary zone and the area that is within in between the renal medulla which is the also it is also the cortex that is called the renal columns so basically the renal cortex comprises of the cortical zone the juxta medullary zone and the renal columns the renal pyramid the renal sorry the renal medulla contains of renal pyramids renal pyramids are these Uh, longitudinal strikes that you can see within the renal medulla it also contains a renal papilla so this structure there is the renal papilla the other is the renal pyramids so if you want to know the flow of urine the urine will flow from the it will uh, filter from the uh, renal pyramids towards the renal papilla and then go into the minor calices which are these are the minor calices and then this is the major calyx from there it will go into the renal pelvis and then down towards the ureter that is the basic flow of urine so what we must know is the renal cortex is what that holds the it uh, it it basically holds the glomerulus and the uh, since it renal cortex is the one that holds the glomeruli therefore the renal cortex is granulated so you can see a granulated appearance in the cortex since it has glomeruli medulla has a striated appearance that is because of the long loop of henle it consists we will talk about it further so um basically the main structural and the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron so for the details of this video will be basically on the nephron so if you want to take a larger section of this of this if you want to take a larger section out that will be this so basically this is our renal cortex and this is our renal medulla and like i explained before these are minor calyces right i hope you are oriented now so there are two types of nephrons in our urinary system the first main type is the cortical nephron the second type is the juxta medullary nephron juxta medullary nephron 
so just like i explained before these names are there according to the areas that these nephrons lie within so uh, the nephrons all of these have the same nephrons same nephron but according to the site where it lies we have categorized into the two types so just like i told you before the inner cortex is separated into the cortical i told you the cortical zone and the juxtamedullary zone same way the nephrons that lie mostly outer uh, that runs a short distance through the medulla is called the cortical nephron see you can this is the cortical nephron it runs only through a short distance through the medulla and this is the juxtamedullary nephron this is the juxtamedullary nephron it runs a long distance through the nephron through the cortical uh, through the medulla juxtamedullary nephron runs through a long distance in the medulla cortical nephrons run through a short distance in the medulla these lo long loop of engel henle are the reasons for the striated appearance of the pyramids that is why uh, the cortical that is why the the medulla contains of a uh, striated appearance that is because of the loop of henle of the nephrons so these nephrons consists of several parts the bowman's capsule this area i'm drawing is the bowman's capsule and then we have the proximal convoluted tubes then we have the long loop of henle's then we have the distal convoluted tubes those are three main types of the nephron it is essential to know each of these so basically the bowman's capsule is the expanded part of the tubular structure and it is it has a closed end it is not open as you can see it has a closed end of the to the nephron you can see it is cup shaped and it it has two walls so basically double walled so the inner layer in as you can see this is the enlarged section of the bowman's capsule so basically the inner layer contains of flattened epithelial cells those are the green ones i have drawn they are the flattened epithelial cells that forms the innermost layer and then the outer layer of the bowman's capsule is composed of the simple squamous epithelium so the space between the inner and the outer layers are called the cap capsular space so this space is called the capsular space so whatever the filter rate that is brought from the blood vessels are filtered through these flattened epithelial cells into the capsular space and then it goes in through the to the uh, capsular space and then it flows outwards towards the proximal convoluted tube loop of henle and the distal convoluted tubes the glomerulus is the part that is within the bowman's capsule so this red area is the glomerulus it is a ball of capillaries and it is surrounded obviously by the bowman's capsule so it gets blood from the efferent arterioles and it takes out blood outwards through the efferent arterioles the efferent arterioles are smaller in diameter more than the efferent arterioles efferent arterioles will have two capillary networks that is it will form this peritubular capillaries where it covers the proximal and distal convoluted tubes as you can see here these are the peritubular capillaries it will cover the proximal and the distal convoluted tubes and the other network is this the vas recta we will talk about the function of this in future videos so basically you have to know is the efferent arterioles will have two capillary networks it will cover the pro proximal convoluted tube and the distal convoluted tube forming the peritubular capillaries and it will also form a vasa recta that is it will where it runs through the medulla covering the surrounding the loop of henle finally we have the proximal convoluted tube and the distal convoluted tube so proximal convoluted tube is definitely it is long as you can see longer and it is more wider 
than the disconvoluted tube and it is the simple epithelium in order for substances to flow. The loop of Henle is of U shape. So, it has a descending limb and it has an ascending limb. You have to know these parts and when you have to draw diagrams, you have to specifically mark that these are the descending limbs and the ascending limbs. The most important thing is the descending limb uh, can uh, reabsorb water very easily. But the ascending limb of loop of Henle it is not permeable for water. Water will not enter the ascending limb of Henle. Finally, the distal convoluted tube is also formed of simple epithelium cells in order for specialized function for reabsorption and it will join into the collecting tubules, collecting ducts. The distal convoluted tube will join into the distal duct, distal collecting duct and the collecting duct will then join into the minor calyces, major calyces just like I said before the renal pelvis and the ureter in order to flow the urine. So that is the basic anatomy of the urinary system. So the mechanism will be discussed in future videos. Thank you.